Today on Trucks, Stace and I show you how to get better traction off-road by installing a locker in our 96 Chevy. Then we'll take you step-by-step -step through the installation of an air-adjustable shock system on that same K1500. After that, we'll spin the wheels off a of Dodge Dakota RT and tell you if it's worthy of the famed RT badging before we trim it out with some Mopar accessories. That's all today on Trucks. Welcome to this week's show, everybody. There's no doubt Big Orange here is more than capable off-road, thanks to its 6-inch lift and 350 Bortec. But the bottom line is, it doesn't matter how much lift or power you've got if you're not getting enough traction. Now, there's a couple of ways to approach this. You have lockers, and then you have limited slip, and there's variations of each of those. What it really boils down to is what's best for you and your driving needs. A limited slip uses a series of friction clutches that limit slip to transfer power to both wheels, while lockers do away with the clutches and use gears that lock together. Now both have their advantages, but we're going to use lockers to get as much traction as we can off-road. You got that right, Mel. One of the neatest things to come along in a while is the lock ride by Power Tracks. And this little jewel replaces your stock spider and side gears in your case. In most applications, it's not even necessary to remove the case from the carrier. First thing you need to do is get your truck up in the air. If you don't have a lift, make sure you put a couple jack stands under the axle. Then you can pop off the differential cover and drain the oil. Pull the retaining pin followed by the pinion shaft. Next, push in the axle. That'll release your C-clip. Now pull the axles out just a little bit so you can take out the spider gears, the side gears, and all the washers. Now you can reuse the pinion shaft, but make sure you check it for any notable grooves or galling that could weaken it. Thanks, man. You can also reuse the side gear thrush washers, unless of course they're excessively worn or cracked, then you need to replace them. Now here's a little rear end 101. This is the carrier, this is the case. Here's your ring gear and the pinion gear is up inside. These are your bearing caps. Now the lock right utilizes the stock differential case, so you'll want to check it for any kind of cracks or damage. This would also be a good time to check your ring gear, see if there's any chipped or broken teeth. Now just take a rag and clean everything up. Now we're ready to prep the lockers. First thing you want to do is coat the teeth of the coupler and driver, the center hole of the driver, and both sides of the thrust washers with grease. Also, place grease in the little window holes in each driver. The grease will help hold things in place and will assist in lubricating until the gear oil circulates. Place a shear pin in each window hole. They should be about flush when in place. Then put a spacer into the center of each driver wide in toward the teeth and set it aside. Press a greased thrush washer on the back of each coupler. Then you can insert the small spring into the large spring. Add some grease to hold them together. Now we can install the washer and coupler assembly on the left side of the case. Slide it over the splines of the axle. Now take a C-clip, put it in the groove, and pull the axle out to seat the C-clip. Make sure you watch your fingers. Carefully push the other axle onto its coupler until the axle shaft is even with the coupler surface. Take a driver spacer assembly, place it on the teeth of the coupler, then press it into the grease. Reach into the center, and press the spacer down over the coupler shoulder and over the C-clip. For the other C-clip, you have to fabricate a tool out of wire or an old hanger. Make sure it's in a U-shape that's about four inches long and one inch wide. Now we can put on our other driver and spacer assembly. It needs to go as far to the left as it can. Then we'll take this fancy little tool that Mel made. Don't be bashing on my tool, man. <laughs> Come in through this groove and press the spacer over to give us clearance for our C-clip. Tap the right axle in until the C-clip grooves are even with the surface of the coupler. It's good, Mel. Now you can put in your C-clip. All right, go ahead and pull that axle out. That's got it. Now rotate your axle and line up the pinion shaft hole and the shear pin holes. Then reach inside the pinion shaft hole and pop the right spacer over the C-clip. 
Now take a small screwdriver and push the shear pin into the opposite driver. Then you can take one of the spring assemblies and slide it into the window behind the pin. Make sure it seats in all the way. Once all four springs are in place, go ahead and rotate the axle and line up the pinion shaft holes in the locker and the case. Your pinion shaft should slide in easily. If it doesn't, check the alignment of your holes. Man, let's spin this thing, see what we got. Let's do it, man. Now, one thing to remember about lockers is they have a distinct popping sound from time to time. And this is not an indication of a problem, <laughs> rather a reminder that you made the right choice. Everything looks good here, man. I can't wait to drive this thing. <laughs> After me. Yeah, you're dreaming, pal. <laughs> when you put your cover back on, we recommend you use a gasket as opposed to silicone, because it'll last longer. One of the good things about the lock ride is it doesn't need special gear lube like a posi does. However, to get better performance and longer gear life, we're going to use a synthetic oil by Royal Purple. Well, for about 250 bucks and three or four hours of your time, you'll be able to run with the big dogs with a locker in your chunk. Don't go away. Stacy and I have more trucks for you after the break. Later on, trucks will spin the wheels off the latest Dodge RT and tell you if it's worthy of its legendary status. But up first, we'll show you how to get the ride you're after off-road or on with an air-adjustable shock system. Now that we have a locker in Big Orange, we're going to go ahead and upgrade the shocks because Mel beat the snot out of the ones that are on there. Oh, yeah. Who was leading the way in the old army weasel? Well, I don't know. Elvis, Martians. <laughs> well, let's just put it this way. Adjustable shocks and air shocks have been around for a while, but it took Rancho to come out with an air adjustable shock. Now, as you guys know, you used to have to get out of your truck, crawl underneath, and turn the knob to adjust the setting on your shocks. Not easy to do on a side hill. This remote control system uses the RS9000 shock and a small air compressor. This runs to gauges in your cab. This allows you to adjust your front and rear shocks independently of each other while you drive. This project will take about a day and a half to complete. First thing you need to do is get the shocks off. I'm going to go ahead and start with the rear. Now when you do this on a truck with a lift, make sure you measure the travel at full extension so you don't get them too short. While Mel's working on the rear, I'll pull the front shocks. As you can see, there's a limiting strap up here on the front. That's a neat feature, so we'll keep that. Before we can bolt the shocks on, we need to replace the manual adjusting knobs with the air inlet. Turn the knob to the lowest setting, then remove the Allen head screws and the assembly. Next, apply lithium grease to the large O-rings, place them on the pressure fitting, and mount it to the shock using the Allen bolts that come with the kit. Don't over tighten them or you could crack the fittings. Mount your air distribution manifold in a safe, out-of-the-way place. We're going to put ours on the inner frame rail on the passenger side using existing holes so we don't have to drill any. Remember, one goes to the front shocks and one to the rear. Run the pressure line from each shock to its corresponding manifold. Then run the lines to where the gauges and bleed valves will be inside the cab. Mount your compressor to the frame rail or the firewall. Now we've chosen the frame rail because it causes less vibration. Once you've done that, connect your pressure fittings using the small O-ring and the plastic nut. Now remember, these fittings are plastic, so just tighten them finger tight. Now that we have the shocks in place, we can connect the pressure lines. Make sure to use a tie strap to keep them from flopping around. Before we can put Big Orange on the ground to hook up the electrical, we need to feed it some new meat, as in wheels and tires. Now, there's a lot of copies of the Alcoa-style wheel out there, but only Mickey Thompson's got the one-piece aluminum design that's dominated the Baja 1000 for years. Now, there's nothing wrong with the BFGs we've been running, but these 14 and a half Baja belteds are going to give us a bigger footprint. Not to mention they look pretty dang cool too. While Mel's admiring the tires, I'll go ahead and mount the gauges. And once you decide where you want them, use the mounting plate as a template to mark your holes. Drill your holes and mount the bracket using the supplied screws. We've drilled a hole in the floor pan and installed a rubber grommet to keep from cutting our air lines, then run them through with the electrical wire. Now you can hook the two air lines from the front shocks 
to one of the gauges and one of the bleed screws. Then repeat the same process for the rear shocks. Now once your lines are run, you can slide the gauges into place and center them how you like, and bolt them down. Now before you start messing around with the electrical, make sure you disconnect the battery. Then take the power wire from the compressor and hook it to either post on the switch. Now take the wire with the inline fuse and hook it to the other post. Then connect the other end to a fuse in the fuse box that will shut off with the ignition. Of course the gauges won't do you any good at night if you can't see them, so Rancho solved that problem with some baby bulbs. Simply take the power wire and connect it to the dash light fuse in the panel, then hook up your ground. After reconnecting the battery, we can go ahead and test it. Good to go here, Stace. It's important to remember these are air adjust shocks, not lift shocks. They're not going to change the height of your ride. But they do give you five settings to choose from, ranging from soft to extra firm, which I'm sure we'll be testing off-road real soon. But hey, we're not hitting the trail just yet. Stick with us. We got more trucks for you after the break. Man, this thing is sweet, isn't it? It is. What do you feel? Like? Oh. Dodge is back on the scene with some muscle, but this time it's in a pickup. Stace and I melt the rubber on the 99 Dakota RT up next on Trucks. sound that this RT, which is available in regular or club cab, packs a punch with a 5.9 V8. The numbers from a dyno run, just under 240 foot-pounds of torque and almost 182 horsepower at the rear wheels gives you an indication what to expect in the seat of your pants when you step down on this dude. The RT script made legends out of the Dodge muscle cars from the 60s, so all you Challenger and Charger fans out there should sit up and take notice of this truck that carries the same badge. That, my friends, is a lot to live up to. Mel, I think we need to take this thing out and lean on it, see if it's worthy of that Mopar name. Let's do it, man. The RT is shot in 17-inch wheels and fat old Goodyear tires that'll give you a sticky grip, allowing you to trip the lights at 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds. But this ride is more than just pure power. It's also built for curves. Thanks to a thicker rear stabilizer bar, lowered suspension and rear paws, and like its muscle-bound family members, it only comes in two-wheel drive, straight through the rear axle. Well, after dropping the hammer on this truck, we think it has what it takes to blow right by its competition. And for a base sticker around 20 grand, you'll have plenty of money left over for new rubber. Don't go away. Stacey and I have more trucks for you so right after the break. Up next on Trucks, we'll finish off the Dakota RT with some accessories you can buy from Mopar and bolt on in your own garage. Let's just say we're more than impressed with the power that comes in the 99 Dakota RT. And while it looks great just as it sits, it's really cool to know you can go down to your dealership and choose from a variety of add-ons from Mopar accessories that will really help personalize your truck. If you want to haul stuff around in your new Dodge, you can slide in a bed liner. But if all you really want to do is haul, then a tonneau cover with factory matching paint's the only way to go, especially if it's in your face yellow. A tonneau cover not only keeps debris out of the bed and makes it lockable, but it'll also eliminate drag when you mash down that beefy V8 under the hood. Before you set it in place, you need to run a strip of foam tape along the front bed rail next to the cab. Align the edge of the tape with the inside edge of the bed rail for the best protection. You also need to protect your tailgate. The kit comes with a clear plastic tape to protect the top from scratches. Make sure you don't leave any air bubbles when you lay it down. Now it's time to lift the unit into place. Make sure the lock's at the rear or you'll have some trouble getting it open. 
Now you can put on the two rear clamps. It's a good idea to put a piece of electrician's tape on top of the bolt to keep from scratching the paint on the bed rail. The clamp should be about an inch forward of the rubber bumpers. Center the cover on the bed from side to side. Then adjust it front to rear and make sure you leave a little gap here at the back to allow clearance for the tailgate. Now you can tighten up your rear clamps. The front clamp should be about 10 inches from the front rail and the middle are spaced out evenly between the front and the rear. I've turned the key so we can mark where our inner latch needs to be. Unfortunately, the only way you can do this is in the dark. Yeah, and I lost the coin toss. I want to see that coin, you dog. Sorry, lost it. Now, once your holes are marked, drill them and attach the latch with the sheet metal screws. The last thing you do is adjust the rubber bumper so it's snug against the top. Now, while Stacy's finishing up with the tonneau cover, I'm going to protect the front of our RT from paint chips and bugs with a custom designed bra. Installation's a snap. Just stretch it over the nose and hook it into the wheel wells. Fasten it to the hood and your investment's protected. The last thing we're going to do is become one of the hottest trends out there and that's molded side steps. These from Mopar use a self-drilling wax tip screw to prevent corrosion and to hold the mounting brackets in place. The brackets can really only be mounted one way and they're marked left and right front and rear for easy reference. To install the box hanger support for the rear step, Push it into position between the floor support and the wheel well seam, then tighten it down. Once all the brackets are in place, bolt on the steps to finish off the look. Well, as you can see, for about $1,500 in a couple hours, we really gave this RT a whole new attitude. Let's see what Stace has for us in this week's quick tip. Sooner or later, we all drop a container of nuts or bolts or whatever, and they go all over the floor. But instead of reaching for a broom, I reach for an old magnet from a stereo speaker, wrap it in a rag, and suck up the parts. Now, why the rag, you ask? Well, that's easy. Just unwrap the rag from the magnet and make a little sack for the parts. This not only gives you an easy way to get the parts off the magnet, but also to get them back into the container from where they came from. But don't run out to the garage and dig through your old stereo speakers just yet. We got truck gear right after this. And now truck gear, parts, tools, and equipment for pickups and sport utilities. Welcome back to the shop, everybody. It's time for this week's edition of Truck Gear. You know, there's not a truck owner out there who hasn't hit the brakes only to hear the cargo take a ride in the bed. That sinking feeling can be a thing of the past with the Load Lock Bed Liner from York Products. Whether it's for work or play, the Load Lock will keep your cargo right where you want it. You can lock in multiple load combinations by inserting 2 by 4s that can also be used to advertise your business in the patented ribbing system. And the custom fit means no drilling. Protect your cargo and your truck with a load lock bed liner for about 200 bucks. Now here's something for you sport truck or lowrider guys, or heck, anybody that's tried to get a vehicle up a ramp in a driveway. It's called the Easy Riser from Surecom Industries in Canada. It's made of recycled rubber and holds 6 tons. Because of the grip of the rubber, they won't slide out from under your tire when you drive up on them. They also have a molded cradle to prevent your vehicle from rolling forward or backward. The low profile, compact design makes it easy to toss these in the back of a truck or an SUV. The Easy Riser comes with a lifetime warranty and goes for about 45 bucks. Finally today, everybody knows that horrible feeling when you turn the key and there's nothing there. Fortunately, BLI Industries has the answer for that nightmare. It's called the Priority Start. It's a computerized switch that constantly monitors the power of your truck's battery. If an accidental drain occurs, such as the lights being left on or the door left ajar, it automatically disconnects before the battery goes completely dead. Installation's a snap. Just reconnect your positive cable to this terminal and the ground wire to your negative cable. You can make dead batteries a thing of the past with Priority Start for about $80. That's going to do it for this week's truck gear. Let's take a look at what Stace and I have for you on next week's show. 
Stace and I put the woe in our classic 66 pickup with a front disc brake upgrade. While we're at it, we'll give it the ability to handle the corners by bolting on a brand new suspension kit. Then it's time for a little Viva Las Vegas as we take you for a tour of the 33rd annual SEMA show in the City of Lights. After that, it's back to the shop to fit Big Orange with a roll bar and lamps for those nighttime trail rides. That's all next week on Trucks. That's going to do it for this week's show. We'll catch you next week, same place, same time. Mel, I can't remember if I did those uh, front clamps. Did you check them for me, please? You better not do anything stupid, man. Trust me. Yeah, trust me. Trust me, I'm a doctor. I'm serious, man. <laughs> All right, man, that should do it. Casey! Come on, man. <laughs> no. Why do I let him do this to me? He seems so trustworthy. Stace! Come on, man! Open the cap, man! Trucks is an RTM production.